Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. Kirk Henderson and Josh Bowe coming to you on Wednesday, November 9th, just before 7.30 p.m. because the Dallas Mavericks played a weirdly started time against the Orlando Magic and they lost uh 94 to 87. Josh, how are you? I'm doing okay. Um despite the loss, um we're recording at 7:21 mm. Texas time and that's a win. Even if the Mavericks lost, that's a win for us. Yeah, well. Uh there's something I don't even really know where to begin with this game. Um, the Mavericks did the thing they do where they play down to their competition early and often. And everyone on the team, except Spencer Dinwiddie, really looked terrible. Um, it, terrible is really the, – it's there's no other way to, to, to phrase it. I mean, they gave up 22 points in the paint in the first quarter, uh, and that was kind of a harbinger. The Orlando Magic turned the ball over like nobody's business, uh, and the Mavericks could do nothing to capitalize. They scored 10 points off of 19 turnovers, many of which were live ball. The offense was tremendously bad. Luka Doncic played a large role in that. He took 29 shots to score 24 points. Um, I, I just, I, I, teams are allowed to have bad nights, but my main takeaway from this game is that if Luca's going to have a, a pretty bad night, then the Mavericks are, they're going to lose. Yeah. Um, and I think the thing is, is you talked about like teams are allowed to have a bad night. I mean, you could argue, I mean, the Mavericks last three games have been decided by single possessions. So, I mean, they've kind of, They've been playing a ton of games on the edge where they've won, and they finally this one finally kind of caught up to them. They weren't able to kind of have them have the the breaks bounce their way. I mean, they've played um, this was their ninth clutch game, uh, and I think they had won the pre. You know, I think they had, I don't know how many they played. I think they played eight games before this, and they had won. I think they were six and two, if I if I believe in, in clutch games. So. They were well. This one, yeah, know. I guess this one will count as clutch. Yeah, because it was a four-point game with five. Even though the even though or Orlando pushed it out of clutch, they pushed it up to seven points for a, a, a number of of minutes within this yeah. section. That's interesting. It, yeah. Just even good teams. I mean, don't get me wrong. This loss was really bad. I'm just saying, you know, they were yeah. bad. If they were going to keep, pl- they were kind of playing with. They've been playing with fire all season. And they're yep. they're honestly lucky that they've only lost four games with the way that they've been playing in the fourth quarters in a lot of these games. So that was bound to catch up to them. And boy, um, it did tonight. The turnover stat is probably the most, one of the more remarkable stats I've seen from a Mavericks team in a while. I mean, 
He only scored 10 points off of what you said, 19 turnovers. Mm. Remember, 14 of those were steals, so live ball, and they still only scored uh, 10 points off of those. Like, I don't have the so, the resources to do like a historical search on that, but that's got to be one of the worst ratios like in team history. Like, I don't. I think 14 steals was like a franchise record or close. Like, I think I can't remember Mark Follow us during the game, but I. I might have misremembered, but I think he said something like 14 steals is either a franchise record or it's close. And to only score 10 points off those 14 steals, like that's just, that's crazy. I don't, I can't remember ever seeing the ratio that out of whack before with points off turnovers. I mean, it was, it was astounding how bad they were on offense. And especially when they tried uh, to run a fast break, it was, it was ugly, ugly basketball. You know, I just don't have a lot of takeaways. I mean, Reggie Bullock's going to be taking a lot of heat the next couple of days. Just saw um, shout out to my guy Glenn uh, on Twitter for sharing that in his 102 minutes, the previous four games, Reggie Bullock has scored five points total. Um, he's got to do something. Bullock's just out there getting cardio, and I'm not crushing him because I, I, I still value his defensive contributions. I think those sorts of things get overlooked, but. Like what are we what are we doing? It's a lot of minutes for five points. Hun- yeah. Five points in 102 minutes is a lot. Three of the five um, starters scored combined ten points. Mm, mm. Which is well, kind of, I mean that happens like every game, but well, yes. and and we should have maybe mentioned that the Javale McGee went back to the bench. Dwight Powell started. Dwight didn't really do much of anything, but that's kind of to be the the energy was the energy's better with with Powell. Um, yeah, they they no won a first right quarter. <laughs> yeah, they won a first quarter. That's that's true. Um, McGee actually looked better in the bench minutes. No, he, he didn't. still had some weird. I know, no, he, he didn't. Looked... There's a video of Luca like like I, like I, looking I, down the bench when Javale took a a nonsense I, like dream shake shot. I know, I know, but five points and six rebounds in eleven minutes, even if he did do some other like really bad stuff. That's is like significantly better than what he was doing. Even well, but yeah, and that's honestly the JaVale I was expecting. Like, like yeah. stats while while the team looks like shit. Because that's what he's famous for, for anybody that's watched him over the years. <laughs> um, he At least he did that. That's true. But there were just instances <laughs> tonight where it's like, can you, can you go for a block? Like, he's not had a block shot since the third game of the season. Um, Pretty crazy. He's bad. He's a bad basketball player. Bad Jason Kidd. Signing, uh, just no other, no other way around it. I, I'm not mad because it's like that was just such a putrid performance where it's like I, I made the joke that because they're in Orlando, it looks like Luca went and had you know a whole bunch of Dole whips at <laughs> at Disney World. I just, I'm not sure where to go with this. I mean, Tim Hardaway, glad to see him playing after doing the splits where it looked like he might have really seriously hurt himself, but was once again awful. You know, Josh yeah. Green. Well, uh, everybody's favorite person to talk about these days, 25 minutes. He took six shots, which I'm really pleased about the volumes there. Um, some nice moves at the, at, in the lane, uh, decisive type stuff at the basket. Felt like the only person besides uh, Spencer and Luca to actually make a decisive move at the basket. But that like, it's just a good example of of where my expectations are with Green. Where, you know, six points, a few rebounds, couple of steals, call it a good game. That's where I'm. I'm happy no with rebounds. His, no rebounds. You're right. Three no assists. rebounds. Two, three assists. That's what it was. And I, I'm pleased with this game, but it's also a question of like this is why I'm not. You know, there's been some some discussion about most improved player. And if it, yeah, seriously, like I had a national media member say that to me, and and I was just like, if he's most improved at six points a game, what was the baseline? <laughs> yeah, this is this is the kind of game where I'm like the people that want him to start and want him to mm-hmm. play like 35 minutes, and I'm like, guys, like let's just you got to do something with your time. Let's just slow down yeah. and enjoy the development as it comes. You want I, here's a truly yeah. remarkable stat. They turned the ball over four times. I know. The Magic should have won this game by 30. I mean, they actually shot the ball well. It was literally just the turnovers that kept the Mavericks in the game. 
I mean, I guess this is just one where you sort of dust your hands and say, okay, back at it. But they played Luka Doncic 35 minutes. They played Spencer Dinwiddie 38 minutes. Dinwiddie is playing. Dinwiddie's like approaching. He's got to be a career high guy at this point. Let's just see. He's playing 32.2 minutes, which if that holds, that'll be the most minutes he's played per game in a season. I mean, he has ever. to. And like, he has to. And he's coming off, you know, he's an older, he's an older-ish player with a knee injury. Like, I just get this feeling Dallas is playing with all sorts of fire. Yeah, this I think is a, they're going to be dang good, but there's just like there's a a thin margin for error where if things go bad, it's going to be like disaster town. Yeah, it's bad that they kind of wasted his best scoring game, although he faded pretty hard in the fourth quarter. Um, but yeah, I think the thing you're kind of right. Like this is a game you can flush away if they can come back out and win like the next couple. But if this, you know, we're just going to have to see: is this a trend? Are they in a slump, yep. or is this just like a blip on the radar? Or are they going to? Get right back on it because they did win four in a row, and and despite the clutch games, but yeah, this was just it was gross, and they lost. And again, it's hard to talk about it because they lost this game the same way they lose yeah. almost every single game in the Doncic era, where Luca isn't Superman, and no one else, you know, one other guy on the roster does something, and and that's it. Like I I, I do think it's a solid argument for Christian Woods like importance to the offense. For sure. Uh, just for his ability to get shots off and for, for that sort of thing. Um, I mean, yeah, this, this was, was awesome. watching this game. This was like watching last season's team if Brunson were hurt. Like, yeah. basically. That, and and that team last season, I don't think, played very well when Brunson wasn't in the lineup, uh, you know, if he was missing games. So, yeah, you're right. If Wood's not on the floor, this – <laughs> looks exactly like the team we've seen the last uh, two years. Well, and, you know, because they played on Monday night, they play again tomorrow night. So that'll be their third game in four days. Uh, they go to uh, – they're, they're heading up to Washington, D.C., my old stomping grounds, to play uh, the Wizards and Chris Stapps Porzingis. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how Luka performs because this was Luka's – this was the worst game I've seen Luka Doncic play in in a Dallas uniform I can't remember when like he was atrocious he he was shot hunting and he was trying to get that 30 points and that I don't like that because not that I I, I wanted him to like not lose the record but just some of the attempts were was like ooh buddy yeah he didn't have a know. turnover though which was kind of <laughs> well it's hard Thank to you. turn the ball over when you're shooting Shoot. 29 <laughs> sure. times yeah but they got to get it together because it's like They've kind of enjoyed a pretty nice schedule for the most yep. part. In terms it's a lot of, harder. Yeah. I mean, Washington, I mean, they're not great, but they're not necessarily a push. I mean, they're better than Orlando. And by the way, Orlando was missing their best player tonight. So that makes a difference in terms of how you should feel uh, about the game. Uh, but Washington, which is not a pushover. Portland, who's played exceptional. LA, which is not off to a good start, but they still have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Houston, which is a, a relief. And then, man. Denver back to back, Boston, Toronto, Milwaukee. <laughs> so they're they're gonna start playing some some teams that are that are playing well. And you know, no more Orlando's for the for the next couple of weeks, no more Oklahoma City's, no more um, you know, Brooklyn. They played twice who are in disarray. Like they, they're gonna have to 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 get it together uh in the next two weeks. And and maybe they do, because I mean I mean, how many times have we seen Luca play bad against a bad team and look kind of disinterested and we don't like the body language? And then, you know, he plays a game shortly thereafter in prime time against a good team and he lights it up. So following the trend, I would expect them to pick it back up. But again, they just this game has to be a one and done flush it. Go back I'm out. Getting there. a little amused. So Twitter is not a good indication of what Mavs fans are thinking. No, every loss I get my mention saying, I can't believe yeah. built this roster this way. Like, I like, will say though, I am pretty getting pretty amused at people who are frustrated by like Jason Kidd looking like the the most bemused, like just emotionless, just like he's watching, like he's an innocent bystander to the game. More and more people <laughs> are picking up on that, and it no one cares when you're winning. When you're losing, it's like, uh... <laughs> or when yeah. they go on these, or when they go on these runs, like the the other team scoring on them. And he waits probably two possessions too long. 
and then calls a timeout. Yeah. I don't know. It it's a long season. This is just the tenth game. They're six and four. Life goes on. I mean, this is. It, I, I'm not. I'm not particularly frustrated outside of it's just. When you it's just eighty scoring eighty seven points is really hard to do in the modern NBA. Like they, yeah. they missed a ton of free throws. They missed the margin of the game free throws. They were twelve and nineteen. Like they twenty, you know, twenty six percent from three, just real bad, real, 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 real bad. Yeah, and it's hard to talk about because again, I mean, they've they've lost this game literally a hundred times since Luke has been trapped. Like this is how they lose every time they lose. It, it really it usually looks like this. So it's kind of hard to uh, come up with something new to say. But that. Again, that turnover stat thing, that's really good. I'm going to be thinking about that one for like the next 24 hours because that is just crazy. I hope there's someone, you know, to McMahon uh, who usually is able to use you know, the ESPN stats and information uh, department of ESPN to look up some of these things. I hope he does that or, you know, someone can look it up because I, I still cannot believe that they scored 10 points off 19 turnovers and 14 steals. Like, that's just – that's bananas. That's something like, you know, kind of like that Thunder loss where all – that they were the second team in 25 years to lose a game with a 16 point lead in the final four minutes. Like, I almost wonder if this is another one of those. Like, Alice is only the second team in the last <laughs> five years to lose a game where the team has 18 turnovers or they have 14 steals. You know, like it's just it's crazy. Some of these that they've played some of these games. It's just been kind of bizarre the way this season started in a lot of ways. But otherwise, you know, let's see where they're at after these next couple of games. I think we'll have a good indication of what this team's made of uh, by the time we get to Thanksgiving, for sure. So, we'll see. Well, all right. We'll be back tomorrow night because they play uh, Chris Dapps and company. Hopefully, that'll be a more fun game to talk about. We tried to keep this one brief because, one, it was terrible, and, two, there's you know the opportunity for us to basically have four podcasts in 48 hours, so I don't want to take <laughs> up too much of your feed. Everybody be good. Been Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow, Mavs Moneyball After Dark. Thanks so much for uh, spending part of your day with us. Have a good one. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.